Hello, Super Savers. I hope everyone is healthy and well. I'm certainly happy that my voice is getting a bit better day by day. As many of you have requested, today's video is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to buy new issue brokered CDs at Schwab. First, I'll walk you through how to do this the easy way. And then I'll go through how to narrow down the brokered CD search a bit for those of you who have more specific CD requirements that you're looking for, such as callability, yield, and so on. I'm assuming that you already have a Schwab account, so the very first step is to log into it. Here's my account summary screen. I'll go to Trade, and from the pull-down menu, I'll select CDs, which will take me to this screen, showing me Schwab's highest yielding CDs by maturity. This row here shows the maturity or term of the CD, and this row shows the highest yield. I'm going to buy a one month new issue brokered CD for this tutorial, as I usually do for most of these tutorials. You should select the maturity or term that's most relevant for you. The purchasing steps in this tutorial are the same regardless of whether you buy a one month new issue brokered CD or one with a longer maturity. So I'll go ahead now and click on this here. And when I scroll down, Here's the list of one month new issue brokered CDs that are available for purchase at Schwab from highest yield to lowest yield. I can confirm this up here where it states that these are CDs maturing between one month and six days and one month and 12 days from the time that I did the research for this video. This column here shows the name of the issuing bank and this column shows the coupon. This is an annualized number, meaning I don't get 3.8% over the one month period that I'm holding this one month CD for. And this column shows the coupon frequency. Given that I'm looking at one month CDs, it should come as no surprise that the coupon is only paid at maturity. This column shows the maturity date, all roughly one month from the time that we pulled this data. And this column shows the quantity. When I click on quantity here, I see that the number in the quantity column is used to calculate accrued interest and other values. For the number of bonds, or in this case, CDs available to buy or sell, I have to look at the min and max columns, these two columns here, to the right of this price column, which shows how much you pay per $100 of the CD. For all the brokered CDs here, the price per $100 of each listed CD was indeed $100. In some cases, which I have not encountered recently, you may find a CD where the price per $100 of the CD is less than $100. In a case like that, say I pay $99 per $100 of brokered CD purchase, this would mean that I'm getting the CD at a discount. So my actual yield, my rate of return, on that CD would be higher than the coupon rate listed here. Schwab refers to this actual yield, this rate of return, or whatever you want to call it, as APY, which can be found in this column on the far right. APY stands for Annual Percentage Yield. For the brokered CDs listed here though, you'll notice that the APY column is always higher than the coupon rate even though I'm not getting my CD at a discount. The reason for this is because the APY number incorporates compounding. It assumes that when this one month CD here with the 3.8% coupon matures, I'll reinvest all the proceeds, the principal and the interest to buy another CD, also with a rate of 3.8%. And this compounding naturally results in a higher APY than the coupon rate. If I was shopping around for one year CDs, like you see on this screen, I would see that the APY and the coupon rate are the same for all of them because there is no element of compounding in this instance. I'm not buying a one year CD though. So let's go back to this one month CD screen. This CD from the Bank of East Asia offers the highest yield on the list. So I'll click on it to learn more. And this description box will pop up. I'll confirm that I'm okay with everything here. In particular, the blue sky restrictions, which show that this CD is not available to the legal residents in foreign states, Montana, 
Ohio, and Texas. Given that we're based in New York State, the blue sky restrictions are not an issue in this case. Now I'll scroll down and check the rest of the information on this CD, including the fact that it's FDIC insured. And if I keep scrolling down, I'll also see that the CD is not callable, which is the kind of CD I like because the issuing bank can't redeem the CD if interest rates go down and take my higher than market rate interest payments away from me. At the very bottom, I also see that there's a yes next to survivor's option. This yes basically means that if I buy this brokered CD and then die before it matures, my estate or beneficiary can redeem both the principal and interest on the CD without penalty. They would not have to wait until the CD matures to receive the proceeds, nor would they have to sell the CD in the secondary market at a possible loss in a rising interest rate environment. I'm okay with everything, so I'll click the buy button. And here's the order entry screen that pops up. As always, I'll double check that everything is correct. Then I'll scroll down and change this buy quantity to $1,000. And for auto rollover, I'll select no, because I'll probably need the proceeds from this CD for another tutorial in January. You can choose yes for auto rollover if you want the proceeds from your CD to be reinvested into another CD with a similar maturity. Do note, however, that three months is the shortest auto rollover maturity that's offered. So in my case, where I'm buying a one month CD, auto rollover into a CD with a similar maturity wouldn't work anyway. I can't change anything here. It's the only option available for new issue brokered CD purchases. You can also click on this link here if you want more details on the certificate of deposit disclosures. I'm all set, so I'll click on review order. And here's the review order screen that pops up. Again, I'll reconfirm that all the information is correct, including this estimated sales price, and read through the order messages about FDIC insurance, fund availability, and when the order will be placed. And as an FYI, these two settled funds messages were probably due to the fact that I sold something just a few hours earlier so that I'd have enough money in this account to buy the brokered CD for this tutorial. I'm ready to place my order now, so I'll click on this button here. And here's my order confirmation screen. Let's say, for example, that I'm looking for a new issue brokered CD with a yield of more than 4% and a maturity of under six months. I also want the CD to not be callable, and I also want it to have a survivor's option. Here's the quickest way to do this. I'll start from my account summary screen and click on trade. And as before, I'll select CDs from the pull down menu. And again, as before, this is the screen that will appear, showing me Schwab's highest yielding CDs by maturity. This time though, I'll click on find CDs. And this find CD screen will pop up. I'll scroll down a bit now and select the search criteria. I want to buy a CD, so that's fine. I'm going to untick this show best quote only box just so that I can show you a longer list. Typically though, you would want to see the best quotes only, so you would keep this box checked. Down here is the maturity and yield search criteria section. I can select from these minimum maturity dates up to these maximum maturity dates. And here I can enter the minimum yields I'm looking for. And because I know this question will come up, Without diving into the weeds, yield to worst is basically the most conservative potential rate of return, the lowest rate of return you can get on a CD or bond, typically one that is callable. It assumes that the issuing bank does call the CD early. Yield to maturity, on the other hand, is your potential rate of return assuming you hold the CD or bond to maturity. I'm going to set yield to maturity to 4% and the maximum maturity date here to six months. And down here, I'll check off the boxes for new issue, non-callable, and survivor's option. All the CD requirements that are important to me. You can change this up based on your own CD requirements. And then I'll click view search results. And voila, here's the list of eight new issue brokered CDs that match my specific requirements. They all have yields higher than 4% and 
and maturities of less than six months. And they're non-callable with a survivor's option. And I know it says recently issued here for all of them, but it seems Schwab treats these CDs as new issues because when I tested out placing an order for a few of them, the estimated fee was $0, like with new issues, rather than the dollar per CD online, which is what Schwab charges for CD transactions in the secondary market. So going back to my search results, at this point, I still need to check that there are no blue sky restrictions that would disallow me from purchasing my CD of choice. To find this out, I would just click on any of these CDs here for a detailed description of that CD. Assuming there are no blue sky restrictions, all I have to do now is follow the steps from the previous section to buy the brokered CD that best suits me and my portfolio. And hopefully, this detailed tutorial will help you do the same to find the brokered CD on Schwab that best suits you and your portfolio. Now, if you're new to brokered CDs, be sure to check out this video here on brokered CDs versus T-bills so that you fully understand what a brokered CD is and the pros and cons of brokered CDs before clicking that buy button. All right, Super Saver, as always, if you enjoyed what you just watched and learned today, don't forget that thumbs up and see you again soon with another exciting wealth building video.